2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Always great to have a chat, uh, Head of School of Education at the University of Newcastle, and this is a, a, an interesting topic and it's probably uh, very poignant because we are going through the situation. Are we going to have a plebiscite on same-sex marriage in Australia? Will, will the government make a decision? And there was an article in the paper a couple of weeks ago that schools were urged to opt out of Gay Day and uh, schools planning to take part in the annual gay rights event last month were warned to limit their involvement because of concerns that it could be a controversial topic. It is a controversial topic and it's uh, we're not looking at... We're looking at whether it is something schools should be involved in. As we were talking about this off the air. It's making sure that we get the right message across. But is it something that the schools should really have a say in? Well, it, I guess it depends on what that say is, Todd. So if we think about schools as promoting open-mindedness and a civil society and the common good, which are actually functions of the original nature of what public schools were about. The assumption was the government could be trusted better than the church or a group of citizens just organizing themselves because of all the prejudice that comes inside of those schools. So in a democracy where we're promoting open-mindedness, common good, and actually disagreement, because democracies at work actually know how to disagree, we might not know how to do that well right now, uh, that this would... But that's anything the theory anyway, the isn't it? The key becomes that a school shouldn't be t uh, seen to or deliberately promoting or advocating uh, on behalf of one particular side or another in a controversy event. But raising a topic, promoting discussion on an issue is actually part of what education is about. This must be a minefield for some headmasters because they're sitting there going, how can we do this the right way without angering one side of the debate or angering the other side of the debate or getting everyone offside right across the whole And also whole any message that we do is actually a lesson to students. If we cancel something or we go pro proactively for something we're actually teaching our young people our own values which because kids watch us with that they don't listen to us you may have realized that but they watch us so how we respond might be the lesson inside the lesson my experience as a teacher I'm a high school social studies teacher in my background and in a school leadership background on top of that is that we really have to give an option so if the school is going to have an event it might be a diversity day or an open uh, opportunity to discuss certain issues in a very fair and, and reasonable way that for anybody that feels uncomfortable, we have an alternative event for you. So what typically works, because there are some in our society who would say that sponsoring certain topics would be too controversial or too troubling for them or their children, that that's their right, but we give an alternative and an equivalent on the side of that. And typically that would be no different if we had a reading assignment. Somehow now the Scarlet Letter, and in the States, Huckleberry Finn, the classic Mark Twain yep. novel, is controversial. So what you do is you say, here's the one that's required. Here's an alternative, or you can propose me something else. So if we go that route, then most people don't feel put off by having something uh, put on them that they don't feel comfortable Times with. Times really have changed, haven't they? Because when I was at school, and probably when you were, if that was the book you're reading, that was the book yeah, you're reading. Even and ask. it was a case of, look, but I don't want to read that book. Well, you really don't have that, have that opportunity. The thing that we were saying also, when I was in high school, uh, same-sex marriage issue, gay rights. I suppose the world has changed a heck of a lot in you know, 30 years since, since, since I've left school. All I was concerned about was we've got a test coming up, we've got to get through school, school holidays are coming, we've got a cricket match against Adamstown. <laughs> the world has changed and the young are being bombarded with so many more theories, with so many more ideas. It must be very hard for teachers because this is just one of probably a lot of difficult topics or potentially difficult topics that teachers have to work out whether to introduce and how far to go with the students. I think what many parents aren't worried really about is that the teachers can't do that well. It's the rest of the society that's exposing children to so much of the sort of the dark internet side of things. Just one episode of Game of Thrones could trouble you for about a month. And many kids are <laughs> yes. watching uncensored aspects of the internet where they're seeing and exposed to things which are actually abominable. What parents worry about is if it's not facilitated right by an expert teacher, that it could create some confusion in their young people's minds or counter to what the family values are. So I think teachers have the usual trust that they're going to get it right, 
but it's very difficult because kids are exposed to so many things and have so much bad information or cruelty or leftover stereotypes and isms. I think that's the part that's difficult. So a whole version of teacher preparation and teacher training around managing difficult topics is almost crucial to being able to facilitate this so people don't get turned the wrong way. You can understand why teachers turn around and say, where do we start on a daily basis of, of teaching kids? Because there just seems to be more and more and more thrown into the mix the teachers need to deal with it must be hard the real key in the early primary grades though is kids are hardwired to be positive optimistic collaborative creative brilliant multilingual people we take it away from so them. so where do we go wrong at what we, point we does steal that it away from them as we start to have schools become about compliance so kids are actually wanting to be open-minded we tend to close it by some of society's traditions and histories so kids are not are the problem it's how we interact so if we start early enough open-mindedness is natural kids are genuinely kind if I have two I'll give you one if I have one I'll give you half if I have enough what do you want we end up being kind of the uh, rulers of the domain so I think we have to get primary education through the literature and through the culture and the collaboration right that every child is a precious gift and whatever their talents whatever their strengths whatever their diversity is is fine and then we don't have controversy it comes later on when we become stereotypical and then we the bullying starts and then we become negative but a lot of that negativity is what's brought to school it's not what's what's created in school interesting topic and there's going to be a lot more said on that john thanks for your yeah, time thanks, this morning Todd. yeah it'd be great if we had uh, a cookie cutter solution that would take care of everything but unfortunately the world isn't like that professor john Faschetti, head of school of education at the university of newcastle